got another exam question here on the NMR topic. So we're up to number 20 now. So I'm going to make this the last one and move on to a different topic. So I hope they've been useful. Uh, please let me know what you think in the comments. Okay, so there it is. So if you want to have a go at that, pause the video and then play on when you're ready for the answers. Okay, so we'll go through the answers now. So the first thing I need to say is that there are at least four different structures on the mark scheme that are possible. So I'm going to go through the, the most obvious one. And I'm sure most people will have got that as their structure, if they've got it right. Hopefully you have. Um, but I will show you the alternatives at the end and point out how it all links into uh, the data. So irrespective of which um, structure you have gone for, this is common to all of them. So the first thing I've done is worked out the empirical formula by processing the elemental analysis by mass, so it's just percentage over relative atomic mass for the atoms, and we get this simpler whole number ratio of 2 to 4 to 1. Empirical formula comes out at C2H4O. That's got an MR of 44. And then if we look at the mass spectrum information, the molecular ion peak, is it M over Z132? Well, that's the MR of the molecule. So you can see that that is three times that. So we just multiply the ratio by three to get the molecular formula, and that comes out at C6H12O3. Okay, so moving on to the proton NMR spectrum, you'll notice this has um, been done in D2O. So that's going to remove, in general, any OH or NH protons. We're not interested in um, NH protons because we don't have any nitrogen in the molecule. So it's removed protons in the um, OH environment. And then we've got some extra information here. When the spectrum is run without D2O, there are two additional peaks with the same relative areas at 11 and 3.6 ppm. So there must be two sets of protons in um, OH environments. So if we look at the data sheet, you'll see that delta 11 ppm is due to either a COH proton or an OH proton. Obviously, they would have the same peak area because it's just one of each, and delta 3.6 OH. So if we look at the, there's three oxygens in the molecular formula. So the likelihood is that the delta 11 ppm will be a COOH proton and the 3.6 an OH proton because that combination gives us the three oxygens that we need. Okay, so all we'll do now is just do what I usually do, go through the signals that we can see, um, look at the splitting pattern, the shift value and the peak area, and we'll be able to hopefully establish what that little part of the molecule looks like. Try and draw it out if we can, and then just build up the molecule as we go. So we'll start with this um, quartet at delta 4 ppm. So the fact that it's a quartet means there must be an adjacent CH3 to the proton causing this signal. The area 1 means that there's only one proton in the environment and the shift value of 4 ppm is telling us that this proton is in an H to C to single bond O environment. So there's that written up. So if we just draw out what we can from this. So we've got um, a single hydrogen bonded to a carbon that's singly bonded to an oxygen and then adjacent to that is a CH3 group. Now remember we think we've got an OH group and um, a COOH group so the likelihood is is that this here is the OH group so I'm just going to put that in for now. It might be wrong but that's what we think at the moment. So moving on to this tall signal here at um, what's that 1.3 ppm it's a singlet, so there's no adjacent hydrogen. Um, the area of six means there's six protons in this environment, so we're talking about two equivalent CH3 groups that are causing the signal, and um, 1.3 ppm is just H to C to R. Okay, so what's that little bit going to look like? Well, we've got a carbon with two CH3 groups on it, but we can't have any hydrogens adjacent to that. So we must have just carbons either side of that. So we'll finish off with this signal here. So that's at about 1.2 ppm. It's a doublet. Um, so that means an adjacent CH group. It's got an area of three. 
So it's a CH3 group that's causing the signal. And again, we've got a shift value of um, an H to C to R environment. So there's that written up. And I'm just going to refer back to this part of the molecule that we've already established from that first signal. Um, we're talking now about these protons here. Um, these are in the H to C to R environment. There's three of them and they're adjacent to a single proton, hence split into a doublet. Right, so we've run out of signals on the proton NMR spectrum, so we need to start putting this together now. So we'll just summarise what we know so far. We've got this molecular formula. We know we've got this part of the molecule, this part of the molecule, and we've also got um, a COOH group. We think there's a COOH group as well um, because of the detour information. Right, so if I count up the carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six. Ah, so I need to get rid of a carbon. So what I could do is I could shove that over there. So that drops the carbon count to six now. Um, we have got one oxygen, we need two more. And in terms of hydrogen, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We need one more. So that is going to be my structure, which is in fact the right answer, or one of the right answers. Now remember I said there were four possible structures. This is one of them. It's actually probably more than four, um, but I'll show you the other three and see how it all links in with the information. And maybe some of you have got one of these instead of the one I've gone for. So there they are there. I'll just quickly talk through how it all links in. So if you think about this structure here, you can see we've got the H to C, the single bond O adjacent to a CH3. So we've got that feature in there. And we've also got these two CH3 groups with no adjacent hydrogens. So that structure works. Moving on to this one, again, you can see two CH3 groups with no adjacent hydrogens. And we've also got the H to C, the single bond O with an adjacent CH3. So that one works. And the one at the bottom, two CH3 groups with no adjacent hydrogen. And there's that H to C, the single bond O with the um, CH3 adjacent.